Well, it's great to be here at the Cliffs Moor on such a beautiful day. There is no St. Patrick's Day Parade 2021, but I believe St. Patrick speaks a message of hope today through his writings. And that's my hope, is that as we look at St. Patrick's writings, as we look at his life, that we will be greatly encouraged. It's remarkable how the writings of Patrick survived the Dark Ages. Of the writings from the 5th century, I believe St. Patrick's Confessio, or his story, his personal story, is some of the only writings from Ireland and Britain of that time. St. Patrick, before he dies, he wants his personal story written down to give glory to God, what God did through this ordinary man. He calls himself right at the start, he says, through this ordinary sinner, God this, did this incredible work. At the start of his Confessio, he talks about where he's from, who his family are. Uh, his grandfather was a priest, his father was a deacon. So they were religious people at the time the priests married the 11th century that priests stopped marrying. Right from the start, he gives us his story of how he was taken captive to Ireland. And this is what Patrick says. He said, I was taken prisoner. I was about 16 at the time. And at that time, I did not know the true God. I was taken into captivity in Ireland, along with thousands of others. And it was among foreigners that it was seen how little I was. And it was there that the Lord opened up my awareness of my lack of faith. Even though it came about late, I recognized my failings. So I turned with all my heart to the Lord my God and he looked down on my lowliness and had mercy on my youthful ignorance. He guarded me before I knew him and before I came to wisdom and could distinguish between good and evil. He protected me and comforted me as a father does his son. So Patrick talks about this personal relationship that he comes into with his maker, with the creator God. And he also talks about his conversion. And this is what he says about how his, his heart was changed. And he describes it like this. And he says, after I arrived in Ireland, I tended sheep every day and prayed frequently during the day. More and more the love of God increased and my sense of awe before God. Faith grew and my spirit was moved so that one day I would pray up to a hundred times and nights perhaps the same. I even remained in the woods and I would rise to pray before dawn in snow, ice and rain. I never felt the worse for it. As I realize now, the spirit was burning in me at that time. So Patrick has a spiritual awakening. He comes to this personal relationship. He is alive in God. I love that where he says the spirit, talking about the Holy Spirit, the spirit of Jesus was burning in me at the time, he says. But this trial of being taken captive to Ireland, it changed Patrick and it tra he was a transformed individual. And God gave him a great love for people through this trial. And he says, however, it was very good for me, this, what happened to him, since God straightened me out and he prepared me for what I would be today. I was far different then from what I am now and I have care for others and I have enough to do to save them. In those days, I did not even have concern for my own welfare. It's a great reminder that trials, when God is on board, the Bible tells us that trials produce hope and produce perseverance and produce character. These trials, they, they change us into the person God wants us to be. As you look at Patrick's writing, he's so similar to the Apostle Paul. He's just a missionary. He's, he's a man on a mission for God. And, but this is what Paul wrote about trials. In Romans chapter 5, he says, We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus, through whom we have access into this grace in which we stand, rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in the trials, in the tribulations, 
knowing that the trial produces perseverance, character, and character produces hope. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. And so this is great that Patrick's awakening as he's there taken captive, he's a slave, he's, he's minding sheep. And he looks back on this time before his conversion, before he was taken captive, before the light of God, which is now in his life. And this is what he says about his life before being taken captive. And he says, God knows whether I, I was then 15 years old at the time, I did not then believe in the living God and not even when I was a child. In fact, I remained in death and unbelief until I was reproved strongly and actually brought low by hunger and nakedness daily. So Patrick is describing his state before he was taken captive, before he knew God. And he describes it, he says, I was in death and in unbelief. You know, Paul also wrote this in Ephesians chapter 2, the Apostle Paul saying the same words. Paul says, but God who was rich in mercy because of his great love, which he loved us, even when we were dead in our sins, when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised up together. So Patrick is describing his, his spiritual state in, in light of where he was in the love of God, in the light of God. He describes himself, he was dead. And Paul also says that in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. He says, and you who, whom God made alive, you were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of the world. So Patrick's conversion is the template for his preaching, for his message. Patrick's message is a message of conversion, that we need an, a rebirth. We need to be born again, as Jesus said. And Jesus also taught about this. Jesus said this, he said in Matthew 18, Jesus called a little child to him and he set him in the midst and he said, assuredly I say to you, unless you are converted and become as a little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. That's Matthew 18, verse two and three. Here's a good illustration to just explain that word conversion or, con or converted. You could be drinking whole milk, cow's milk all your life with your cereal, but all of a sudden you, you taste oat milk and you're, and you're converted and you're like, I'm converted, I no longer use cow's milk. And the idea is that you've had a complete rethink. You've completely changed your ways. And that's what Jesus is saying. A personal conversion is required. And the idea that we are, that what the Bible says, what Paul says, what Patrick said, that we are dead in our sins, that we are dead to God before we are converted, it deserves great thought. Uh, the Bible teaches us in Ephesians 2, we read it, that we are by nature dead. Jesus came to seek and save that which is lost, that humanity is lost, is separated from our Creator by sin. Humanity is in need of being made alive by God's grace. And the Lord Jesus said this in Luke chapter 5, I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners and need to repent, need to turn back to God. So often we think of people as good people or fairly all right people, or you might think of, well, that guy's a really bad egg. But our reference point, our scale for deciding that is so often our own standard of morality or of goodness. But you know what? God does the exact same thing. God's standard, of who is good and who is not is based on himself. The scale, the reference point is God, his perfection, his, his glory, that God is, is holy and that God is light and in whom is, there is no darkness. And in light of God's perfection, God says that we have all fallen short 
of the glory of God that we have missed the mark. You can see the cliffs of Moher here. If you picture up the top is God's standard. God is up the top, but we are way down here. And that's what God says, that we have all, we've fallen short of God's standard, of God's glory, because God's scale, God's reference is his own perfection. And we have missed that perfection. And God's conclusion is that we are dead in our sins. We all need a conversion. We all need to be made alive to God, like Patrick was. And this is the message Patrick preached. This was the message that had Patrick beaten, imprisoned, and nearly killed daily as he came to Ireland, risked his life for the good news. And Patrick taught about the grace of God, that it was by grace that we are converted. And that's good news. A historian friend of ours from Ennis, Shane Angland, he's a theologian and a historian, he told us about how the early uh, saints was, were able to communicate this idea of grace. There was no adequate word to describe this grace or this gift of God in the Irish language. But there was an expression uh, that was used by the early Christians in Ireland, was the wrath, which means the treasure of the chieftain or the king. And the idea was that the chieftain or the king would have his settlement. It was the safe area for the chieftain. And he would have his uh, treasures stored in his wrath. And we have those Irish words, Irish names today, Rathdrum, Rathmore. And it's the idea that it was the place where the king, the chieftain, stored his treasure. And so the early Christians described the grace of God as the wrath day, as the, the treasure of God, the place where God stored his treasures. And that sinners were invited into the treasure of God because God had given his treasure, his son, so that we could come and be accepted to be invited into the treasure of Almighty God. And this was excitement in Patrick's heart. One who was dead in his sins is now the treasure of God, cleansed, forgiven, and welcome into the wrath day, welcomed into the treasure of God. And this is the idea of God's grace. Patrick, he said, I must take care not to hide the gift of God, which he has generously given us in the land of my captivity. It was then that I looked for him with all my strength and there I found him. He became alive to God. Also, he talks about the gift of God later on and his indebtedness to God. And this is what Patrick said. This is why I cannot be silent, nor would it be good for me to do so about such great blessings and such a gift that the Lord so kindly bestowed in the land of my captivity. And this is how we can repay such blessings when our lives change and we come to know God, to praise and to bear witness of his great wonders before every nation under heaven. So Patrick received the grace of God when he searched for the Lord with all his heart. And it was then that I looked for him with all my strength, he says, and I found him. And that is the good news, that it is by faith that we receive the gift of God. The Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 10, he says this, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That is the greatest news ever because all of us one day the hundred percent statistics all of us will face death but to know that immortality that eternal life is broken through in the person of Jesus I'll read it again and that if we confess with your mouth if we speak that we believe in Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead you will be saved you'll be forgiven and heaven is open to us and that is what Patrick wrote about. And that was his own experience matched what the Bible says. Patrick quotes this a prophet and he says from the scriptures, the prophet said, call on me in the day of your distress and I will set you free and you will glorify me. 
Well, thank God for Patrick's conversion by the gift of God, by the grace of God. Today, can I ask you, are you able to say like Patrick that I have found him? And if you're not able to say that today, I hope that you'll think about Patrick's words, what he said. It was then, as I looked for him with all my strength, that I found him. It's such great news that Jesus is there to forgive sinners who call upon his name and ask for mercy and forgiveness. Hallelujah. Patrick was very clear about why he came to Ireland. In chapter 37, he says he came to preach the gospel, the salvation message of God. Romans chapter 3 tells us what this salvation message is. In verse 23, it says that we've all sinned. We've all fallen short of God's glory. And Patrick was a faithful ambassador of God to bring the good news. But also the good news, it's laid upon bad news. And the bad news was that God will one day judge all sin. And this is what Patrick said about that. He said, I'm not ignoring the evidence of my Lord who testifies in the Psalms. You destroy those who speak lies. And again, he says, a mouth which lies kills the soul. And the same Lord says in the gospel, the idle words which people speak, they will account for on the day of judgment. So Patrick, he's a faithful ambassador of God. He gives a clear warning that there is judgment at the end of this life, whenever that is. And this is what Patrick says, so I should greatly dread with fear and trembling this sentence on that day where nobody can avoid or escape, but all shall give complete account of the least of sins before the tribunal of the Lord Christ. And the Bible in Romans chapter 6 verse 23 says that. It says the wages of sin is death, that there is a payday for our sins. But the good news is that The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So as we come to Jesus, there is a fork in the road. There is the wages or there is the gift of God. And each of us must make that decision. The wages, there is a payday for sins and that is death. But there is the gift of God freely available to us. Hallelujah. John 3.16, one of the most famous verses in the Bible says it all. And it says that God, he so loved the world that he gave his one and only son and that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life, the gift of everlasting life. And that was Patrick's heart. And that was God's heart that sinners would be saved and not perish for their sins. Patrick says before his conversion, that he wouldn't listen to the church leaders. And this is what he says. He says he would not listen to them when they told him how to be saved. And this is the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. It tells us how a sinner like me, a sinner like you can be saved. It's so simple that salvation and heaven are available for sinners who believe. And Patrick, he upset the culture in Ireland of that day because the gospel, the good news, is shocking to the one who is comfortable in sin or believes that they are good enough. But it is the greatest news ever for the one who wants salvation, for the one who says, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner, the one who wants to be born again and come alive in God. So this is the good news, that Patrick's message of conversion, that we need to be converted, be born again, come into the life of God, instead of being dead in our sins, turn to Christ and and come to life in Jesus. And this is the message that Patrick preached. This is the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the most important message any of us can ever hear. It is the message that eternal life has broken through, that immortality has come to life through the Son of God, through Jesus Christ, who died for our sins. Well, this is the end of part one of the message. 
I hope uh, you're encouraged and I hope today that you will, like Patrick did in his time of trial, call out to the Lord with all your heart. But maybe first of all, if you haven't received that gift of God, as we remember St. Patrick, I pray today that you will call upon the name of the Lord, call out to Jesus, confess your sins and receive that gift today from him in prayer. Jesus Christ has overcome the curse of death and he has brought immortality to life through his death on the cross for our sins and through his resurrection. And today, if you'd like to pray and receive the gift of God and be born again, will you pray with me today? And by a prayer of faith, you can receive the forgiveness of your sins and eternal life. And you can say this prayer with me. Let's pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, thank you that you died on the cross for all of my sins. Oh Lord, today with all my strength and all my heart, I call upon you, Lord. Will you come into my life today? Fill me with your spirit and may I serve you from this day forward. May I grow in the knowledge of God and read the Bible and be baptized and be part of a Christian church that teaches the Bible. And we ask this, for your glory and for your name. Amen. Guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for being with me from the Cliffs of Moher and happy St. Patrick's Day.